Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealthpress. Today is Tuesday. It's March 22nd. It is the third week of March, and God only knows where, where March and February and January have gone. I still feel like it's December. Anyhow, the market is up pretty good yesterday. It was down a bit yesterday. Nothing too crazy, nothing out of whack, but uh, the market looks like it's coming back pretty good today. Now, I want you to notice something interesting. This is the Dow Jones right here. And we had, and I'll talk about this in a minute, but we had some of the biggest gains in years right here. Right here. And you know what happened here? The Fed announced they're raising rates. So, so far, so far, raising rates has not been bearish for this market. And I want you guys to pay attention to that as I go through the analysis. And as I go through the, this week's analysis, because a lot of a lot of individuals and traders and investors believe that uh, that the markets always die when feds raise rates nothing could be further from the truth the market generally rallies about 10 percent on average uh, most of the time the fed uh, raises rates or begins raising rates so it's not something that uh, the, the fact that traders believe the market's going to go lower is, is a misnomer it may go lower but the fact that markets go lower when fed raises rates that's just not necessarily true so let's talk about this week fed talked yesterday about how we may have to be more restrictive which caused the market to go down but it still didn't go down that bad he speaks again on wednesday we've got new home sales on wednesday today we've got red book sales which is a chain store sales report that's going to reflect on retail sales sometimes it's meaningful sometimes it's not it can go either way the big report for the week and this is not a report heavy week we got we're going to let the market uh kind of tr show us where it's going this week and kind of see where the inflation and the war takes it. Terrible things to say, but I can't imagine the market's holding up so well in this type of environment. Uh, durable goods orders. Durable goods orders comes out on Thursday. That's the big, big report for the week. Um, we don't have a lot of big data. Consumer sentiment is going to be important because that's going to reflect on retail sales. Redbook is going to uh, um, give us same store sales information. Could be vital. But durable goods is the big report for this week. Now, volatility levels are still declining. Now, folks, we're in the middle of a war. Fed is raising rates. We've had we have supply chain issues, uh, sonic missiles from Russia. I mean, you name it, you name it. And 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 volatility is moving lower. That's very very important, and that's telling us the market can sustain the current stress on it put the call ratio just finally started breaking down a little bit still in the inflated area once we get down to this level that means the market's overbought but once we're in this area that means the market's oversold and it needs to come higher and based on what i'm seeing and i'm going to talk about some levels right now things are looking a lot better than they looked a week ago so the Dow Jones, even though it closed a little bit lower yesterday, it already uh, pre-opened, made up most of those losses. And 175 right now is not too bad. Remember, the daily volatility is about 600 points on average, five, 600 points. I mean, look at this, high 346, low 340. There it is right there, 600 points. So we did take out the high yesterday, which is very, very important. I'm not as concerned about where we close. I'm more concerned about breaking the high and holding on to that low. Um, and as you could see here, we did that yesterday. We didn't break the previous day's low and we took out the high. Today, I'm gonna be looking for the same type of trading action. I wanna see the market um, take out yesterday's high, which is at the 348.28, 348.50 level. And I wanna see it take out the 200-day the, uh, moving average. If we can take the Dow, trade above the 200-day moving average, we're gonna have a short covering and we're going to have a lot of investors and traders put their money back into the market because then the market will become bullish once again. If you look at the SPY, at the S&P 500, that we're already at the 200-day moving average, but we need to go cross above it and trade two days above it without touching this ugly mustard-colored line. So two days kind of like this, or two days like this, or two days like that, or two days like this, where the low doesn't touch the bar, that'll be bullish. But this is very exciting because we're right now right at the 200-day moving average. If we can pass this level and close above the next few days, we're going to be golden. The QQQ is not looking as pretty because, well, tech stocks took a big dump. But again, we're right near the, this crucial zone where we're breaking up to the upside. And let me just include that in here. 
here's the this 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 choppiness if we can break out of this choppiness which means we'd have to go again and hit 200 day line and if the s p hits it the odds are strong that the nasdaq will hit it too we can get out of this this uh period that we've been in for over a month for five weeks now and start heading higher again and that's what the market looks like it's going to do if you're looking at the russell the russell right now is not anywhere near the 200 day moving average but look at this look at this uh this this area here it's looking really really good and again i'm going to draw this line here for you oops let me just get this i want to draw this area here for you and if we break out of this area and it looks good because the lows are getting higher um as i as i showed you here this is looks bullish if we can break above this area right here if we can break above the 210 to the upside it would be a very 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 bullish sign now looking at the major sectors Let me just do this for you here. Looking at the major sectors, financials look like they can go either way. They're a little choppy right now. Energy looks like it's going to test the highs again. Utilities look like they have no choice but to go higher or stay elevated because energy prices are so high. Consumer staples, I think, are going to have another run up to the 76 area. At least that's what the charts are telling me. Um, consumer discretion, that's the big question mark. If the Dow breaks above the 200-day line, there's a really good chance we're going to break out. Now, we're breaking out here, but I need to see a breakout above the 190 level. That's the magic number. As I told you guys five weeks ago, nothing... When, when did this happen right here? This happened on February 9th. I told you guys on February 9th, nothing is good is going to happen with the stock market till we break above the 191 level on consumer discretionary. I'm sticking to it and I've been dead dead on. Nothing good is going to happen. Nothing good's been going on. It's been choppy. Healthcare looks like it topped out a little bit here. Technology, look well, technology and consumer discretionary are in the same boat. The key is going to be whether the consumer discretionary can break above 191. If it can, it's going to take tech with us. Industrial, I'm loving right now, industrial stocks. I think they're at a, a breakout point right here. Just a little bit more when I think this, these can make new highs. Real estate's kind of... Uh, there's a question with whether uh, the retail can, uh, re not retail, real estate can continue moving higher with higher rates. I don't know. That's the best thing I could tell you right now. It's a big question mark. And basic material, I think, are going to do exactly the same thing as industrial stocks. They look just like it, and they look like they're going to go higher. I honestly don't see how basic materials and industrial stocks cannot rise in light of what's happening with Ukraine right now and in light of everything that we're going to be doing to Ukraine to bring it back on par. Uh, let me just quickly go through the global economy for you, and then I'll talk about my weakest sector, weakest uh, stock, strongest sector, strongest stock. Investors are eyeing the Ukraine inflationary risk right now. As we know, Russian war in Ukraine, Western sanctions are added worries over disruptions to the energy market. And it looks like energies are, are heading back towards all-time highs. A growing gap between interest rates in the U.S. and in Japan, where central bank's key interest rate is minus one, is pushing the dollar higher against the yen. And I anticipate the dollar going higher for quite a bit longer. Hong Kong Alibaba jumped 11.2%. They're going to buy back. Um, the debt, debt laden, I thought this was bin Laden, debt laden Chinese property developer Evergrande said Tuesday would delay its financial report. Um, they're, they're in the crapper and I'm kind of going through this fast because I mean, you know, most of this stuff, national association of business economics, U S federal reserve chair, Jerome Powell said fed would raise its benchmark short race by half a point. If necessary, they're getting more aggressive and they haven't done that since may of 2020. And I'll see it when I believe it, but so far, and usually the market is not as bearish as and most investors think when fed raises rates on Wednesday, central bank announced quarter point rate hike. Um, and uh, stocks rallied after the announcement and went on to have their best week in more than a year because that's certainty for the market. Markets, markets like certainty. Fed's move to raise interest rates has expected for months as supply chain. Um, Fed, Fed's move to raise interest rates had been expected for months as supply chain. I don't know what they're saying here. But yeah, supply chain worries are, were, is what's causing the Fed to raise interest rates. It's just not a full sentence. The war has added to concern that inflation could worsen 
by pushing energy and commodity prices higher, which is why I'm so bullish on basic materials and industrial stocks and oil. Oil prices are up more than 45% this year and wheat and corn have uh, who surged. Wheat is a major, major producer from Eastern Europe, by the way. And Boeing fell a wa uh, quite a bit when a Chinese airplane fell down from the sky, crashed, killing 132 people. Now, as far as the best sector, let me show you what the best sector right now. Um, and again, things might not have moved much. Let's take a look here. So are you surprised? Mosaic, Occidental, CF Industrial, we're long the stock right here. Uh, US Marathon, Apache, Ener Devon, Halliburton, no changes. Energy stocks, energy stocks. Now, which one do I like the best right now? I actually like Mosaic and CF Industries better than the energy stocks. I think they have more upside to go. So in my opinion, it would be either Mosaic or CF. Those are my favorite stocks. Now, energy is the best sector right now. There's no question about that right there. Worst sector, still communication. You guys see why I love my CSI scan? It tells me it doesn't mess around. So if we look on the worst sector, we will find PayPal, Align, Meta, 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 Meta. Honestly, folks, here's the stocks that I'm not liking right now. Align, um, Meta, and Etsy. Etsy, Align, and PayPal. If you want to stick with the communications, you probably want to go with Etsy and PayPal. But uh, those are the ones that I'm really, 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 really uh, bearish on right now. So those are the stocks you want to avoid. PayPal and Meta and Etsy. And the stocks that you want to buy are Mosaic and CF Industrial. Now, before I let you go, I've got something important for you. And keep an eye on those levels on the Dow. Keep your eye on this level right here. If we can break above this level and stay above that level, we're golden. Now, folks, there's a right way and a wrong way to trade volatility. The secret to finding winning trades right now is in what I call super stocks. Our biggest winners were found by cutting all the dead weight out of the market and focusing only on the strongest stocks. And that's why I developed my own trading algorithm. And I'm going live at 1 p.m. Eastern time today to show everyone exactly how it works. Meat and potatoes, no fluff, no red Ferraris, no mansions, no golf courses. It's trading, algorithmic trading, all about it. The coolest things you've seen. I'll show you how you can implement four to five things in your trading to literally take your trading to a whole new level. And I'll show you how much each of these changes made an impact on the portfolio, which is really, really, really cool. Now, click on the link below, register for the class, and find out how to make a more structured approach to trading by leaving emotions out. Tomorrow, we're going to give you a long trade and a short trade, actionable trading ideas complete with options. Just told, don't tell anyone. Follow the link below. Get signed up for my training it's happening at 1 p.m eastern time today and i'm going to show you how algorithmic trading can change how you trade and i could show you how four steps four easy changes to your trading could make a difference between literally night and day we're talking like a tenfold increase you really have to check it out it's very very cool follow the link below if you're watching on youtube it's in the description. The link is in the description. Follow the link below. Check out today, 1 p.m. Tuesday, uh, Eastern Time, 1 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be very, very cool. And keep your eye on the 200-day moving average. And send me some love letters. Support at marketgeeks.com. I want to know if I'm helping you through these bad times. Bye, guys. Take care and have a great day.